<laughs> well, I don't make a ton of video, but I've already got my tanks pretty much plumbed in. I got a plumbing bleach. Uh, working on this, moving the battery over. Today was old Betsy's last day of work. So we're about to get this one going. I figured out how I'm gonna mount these reels. Stainless mountain bolts. Got a bunch of, uh, you know, a bunch of money laying around. Pretty nifty. Got the tank lights in and it's uh I had just blue in there but I've been told you're not allowed to do just blue. So I did blue and green. Got them wired up here. Pretty cool. I've also got these wired up and I got two spots on the back. This thing's going to look like the 4th of July. Tank lights lit up, have LEDs running all the way around. They can light up spots. Big work light on the side. Bring a lot of uh, attention to business if you're, you know, working at night or some of that nature. Just got this in the mail too. Ooh. Fancy see through proportion block. So, rocking and rolling, getting old Betsy taken down and putting her on big Bertha. So, we got Betty back there, Betsy, and this is Bertha. Y'all have a good one. Today, we're going to be going through the new build. We're going to be going through the old build and kind of what we're working on and where we're going for 2024. Uh, people wanted me to do a build walk around and explain my rig when I was working on this truck But we bought this guy or a girl. I should say this is big Bertha. So this is Betsy This is Bertha. So <laughs> we're working on Working on getting her ready for the 2024 season So a lot of people wanted me to do a walkthrough of this one and I videoed it never put it together Never uploaded it and I'm in the middle of getting this one all buttoned up First, let's look at this chaotic mess. As you can see, I've taken the reels off, painted them, stuck them over there. Um, I've taken, I've literally just stripped this for parts, took this, the soft wash box off, cut lines. The only thing I'm yet to do is take my machine off, take it all apart, uh, oil change, everything, clean it up, get it nice and pretty, and then get it mounted over here. So. That's all for old Betsy. She's looking rough. Probably in the future, I'll do a better build for this truck and just run it as a second, you know, for smaller projects, etc. Because not every job is going to need this big truck, but it's nice to have the capability. So what we've got going on here, I had it wrapped. I had logos done. I had the tent done. Uh, this used to be a landscape cage, which we cut out, uh, fabricated. A ladder rack to go on it painted it I've put lights everything's wired up um, to a box so really I reckon we need to start here this is the working side of the truck um, uh, so far I've just got some chemicals and cones and extra hose etc that's gonna be down there on the bottom box uh, it's not a hundred percent complete obviously I'm still working on stuff but I've got it basically uh kind of laid out so you can see what's going on so this is water in and i'm actually not running through the reels uh i did that and you can see they get rusted and corroded even if you put fancy stainless uh like this on there they eventually corrode so this one's actually going to come off of here i'm going to use this just for storage so uh, yeah, that's done away with. So there's my water going in and I have a float valve in there. Uh, not a Hudson float. I used a ball. I don't know what it's called. Um, it's yellow. It's a ball almost looks like a toilet float, but it's, it's supposed to be higher flow. 
better, all that good stuff. So there's my water. I don't know if you can see down there. Well, probably not. Let me let me show you from this side. So this is my water hookup. So pull off a piece of hose, cam lock it into place. Quick and easy. And it goes through a filter, goes up and into the tank. And then I have water coming out. This is my just just water line. And it goes to my proportioner. And then this is actually a flush line for my bleach. Bleach comes out back there and just runs around down here. So if I'm calling for bleach, I open my bleach. And that's it. And it goes to the proportioner. And before I'm done, I shut this and I open water and I continue to draw through that line and it'll flush out the whole line. This has been the easiest set up it worked great on that truck uh, as far as keeping everything flushed out so i actually downstream through a proportioner and so when i'm drawing bleach i mean just pure 12.5 percent through here i can flush out my downstream injector and my line and my proportioner and everything from right there so following that all those uh i also forgot i have a degreaser tank soap tank whatever you want to call it that comes from there uh, anyways all those hoses come through this piece of pvc that's just mounted down so everything's solid and sturdy excuse my messy work environment like i said i'm in the middle of doing this uh, all these hoses come out so i have uh, bleach water and then i'm going to be running uh, like a degreaser like a caustic or something like that that i can downstream um on concrete jobs i do a lot of concrete cleaning so anyways i got one of these nice fancy clear proportioners so you can see and what i have going on here is literally just ball valves i do not proportion so as far as i know a lot of guys are probably going to argue with me and be like dude you need to meter you need to meet. I have never been on a roof job that I needed less than 6%. And maybe that's just me. Regardless, these are true union valves, so it would be nothing to throw one in there. I just don't. I had the other ones, the little black ones. Um, they, they broke. Honestly, every time I used them, I would turn bleach wide open. And so if I'm wanting to do a roof, it's bleach water that's 50 50 that cuts it in half that's six percent and if i want soap i can crack that but typically i just i always leave it wide open so the way this works for downstreaming because as you can see there's this ball valve and then there's one right here um because it has two ports the option of going either way so if i'm downstreaming i open this up I open up my bleach and I leave everything else closed so it calls for 12%. It comes through here. Sorry, neighbors are uh, joyriding. It's New Year's. So it comes through here, 12%. We'll just go through this box and literally goes right to my, my bypass. So um, that's how you downstream through a proportioner. So if I want to cut that mix down, which I don't see why you would ever need to, but I can, I can add soap. I can add whatever. I don't have to downstream bleach. I can downstream, you know, caustic degreaser or something like that straight from the same area. And then like I said, flush it out, turn it off. Let's say I want to wash a roof. I open up this side. Now everything is coming through here. It'll be called for, drawn through my pump. I run an accumulator and I put a check valve in there. I put unions on everything so everything's easily taken out. Uh, everything's been thawed out. Same as this, like it's a trailer plug. So, you know, keep a spare one on hand. Keep it plumbed up with unions. So let's say it craps out. Unhook it, pull it out, unplug it, put the new one in, plug it in. You're down for 25 seconds uh, and you're back up and running. The wires go down under the box and then they go under the truck into the electrical box. So you don't have, you know, 
if you if you do spill bleach or something in there, you're not ruining your wiring. Um, and there's a little bit, you know, that's all that you're exposing. You're not exposing your battery and all of that stuff. So anyways, 12 volt comes out here. Same setup, guys. Uh, just a cam lock. And I haven't put the hose on this one yet, but it's the same thing. So like I said, this is just for storage. This has no functionality. Um, you put the cam lock on there, roll it up. Come over here. Flip a switch, turn the pump on, and you're in business. This box literally has nothing in it right now. It's just just spare wash stuff. So to my messy electrical box, I'm, I'm not finished. White light literally just thrown in there. It's just thrown into the tank. It's not hardwired in. I'm going to take it out. Let me climb my fat behind up here and show you what I've got going on. Uh, that's these steps are really handy. Peep the Crocs my wife got me for Christmas. Boy. Um, all right, so this is what we've got going on over here. Literally just wires coming out. I've got them wrapped like crazy, looking like crazy man, but it's a, a bulkhead that goes down. Piece of PVC, and then I've got a, red, a blue one and a green one. Let me turn them on. A blue one and a green one. I know it's nasty. Tank is nasty. I've got to uh, got to clean it out. Haven't done that yet. Uh, never put water in this tank yet. Still got to put baffles down in here. So. Anyways, a lot of these guys just drop the light down in. So I actually took heat shrink and put this in a big thing of heat shrink, heat shrinked it, and then siliconed both ends. So it's completely watertight. It was already marine grade, but it's like just an extra, you know, I don't ever want this thing to, to crap out on me kind of thing. In the future, this generator is actually going to be mounted above this tank. We're going to build a, a stand for it, mount it here, so I can literally crank the generator, plug in, charge my battery if need be. Um, pressure washer is going to go here. Obviously, I've got water ready to come to the pressure washer, and then I'll go from my unloader to the bypass right there. Just just hooks right in. So easy peasy uh let's see what else so coming around this way this is where we mount our surface cleaner our very rusty crusty surface cleaner that i'm going to take apart clean paint all that stuff haven't done it yet this is just how it sits up there guys it's just pieces of flat bar with a piece of round rod welded on either side uh another piece of flat bar that it rests on it just rests on a piece of flat bar and then up here is this little flat bar dujimahickey and yeah it holds it's not it's not going anywhere and if i'd like i can drill a hole here and through there and put myself a big lock so nobody can take this but uh nobody's gonna take it i mean look at it <laughs> anyways um it works great it does it you think oh it might come off well that's like high enough that it's not going anywhere it's not going to bounce up out of that and if this falls off which it never has and i live on a terribly bumpy dirt road that um just have never fallen off so anyways yeah in here all i've got is tools everything scattered this box got leaf blowers and hose and jumper cables, oil, paint, miscellaneous. There's an extra carburetor for my machine. This box, same thing, just tools, junk. But that keeps everything in the boxes and out of the truck. So my truck keeps, you know, neat and organized. I don't have anything in there as of now. And I'll show you just 
for the heck of it. There's nothing in here, but in the future, you know, if I want to, I can raise these seats with two hands because it's hard to do with one. Um, you know, put a box in here with a bunch of yard signs, stuff like that. Marketing materials can probably fit down into the doors. Uh, little stuff like that, but 2024 is looking, looking promising. So that's it. Um, I know it kind of seems redundant, but when I was first starting to build out a rig and stuff, I wanted to see every detail of how somebody did something. And so guys, if there's something that you want to see, like just ask me and I'll try and address that. Uh, you know, for instance, how I mounted these, I just used D hooks with some straps. It's not going anywhere. Same thing for the gas tank. Um, I'm really just trying to make everything neat and clean and, and purposeful, uh, like this. Okay. So I'm not using these swivels, right? So what do I do with all the swivels that I had? Well, just mount them to the box with an old brass fitting that way. I have something to hook my hose into and it's not dangling or it's not under there. And this literally isn't, I mean, it's not going anywhere. So did the same thing for this side. So, you know, it's like all those little things count was another thing. Drop sticks are so tedious in and out, in and out when all you got to do is plumb two lines into your water tank and then just put a T and two cutoff valves on your bleach line. So uh, it just simplifies some things as far as being able to flush out your lines and keeping everything. Guys, this injector still works absolutely great and I have been using it for a year. Uh, it is a 2.1 GP injector. I've been using it for a year because I flush out my line religiously. I'm religious about flushing out my 12 volt this is the same 12 volt I've had for three years. Um, I'm not going to say that it's not ever going to crap out on me because stuff does. I've had a lot of stuff break, a lot of stuff go bad. Um, but I've learned, you know, not to skimp on things. Don't use brass fittings uh, on a water connection. Always go stainless. Um, don't use those cheap white uh, poly what's it polypropylene fittings because they break off like this these black ones last so much longer um i know that sometimes the white ones are cheaper and more easy to get like this you know got to do what you got to do sometimes but this will eventually break and i'll have to replace it with one of these sturdy black ones you know what i mean so it's it's just uh it broke so I literally over tightened that clamp and broke. I had a, a nice three eighths barb there and you know, whatever. Anyways, that's my rig. Uh, sorry, this video has been so long, but I uh, hope you guys enjoy it and uh, comment down below, hit the like button, subscribe. Uh, let me know what you want to see next. Peace. Yeah.